Pixel has launched a spacecraft manufacturing facility today here in Bangalore, and I'm joined by founder and CEO Aves Ahmed. Uh, Aves, thanks for taking time out. Uh, just for our viewers, try to explain why spend money on your own uh, spacecraft manufacturing facility and what exactly are you building here? Yeah, so I mean, as you know, we uh, are building the world's first constellation of hyperspectral satellites, which in the most basic sense means that we are able to see things at a 50 times richer detail than satellites up in space today are able to do. And that was the mission with which we started. Now, when we launched three demo satellites in the last three, four years of our uh, inception, we were okay with a small lab where we could build one satellite at a time and then launch it. But now that we are entering the, the period where we need to scale up, we need to launch a total of about 24 to 30 satellites over the next two to three years and then expand to hundreds more satellites for ourselves and for different uh, organizations and governments. And for that, we needed a much larger facility. Now, we could have probably rented clean rooms elsewhere. We could have done testing elsewhere. But the reason for having our own uh, assembly, integration and testing facility is it helps control the entire flow of how we build satellites. We can do it much faster, we can do it much more efficiently, and we can do it cheaper. So a one-time investment will mean that we can do 25 satellites, small satellites, um, of up to 100 kilograms at a time here, uh, and uh, and we can turn them around every four to six months. So in a best-case scenario, we can turn around 75 satellites per year from this facility if everything is optimized. And that means we have full control of our speeds, our iterations, and everything else, which is why it was important for us to invest in this and uh, not be dependent on anyone else for our own timeline. Right. So these hyperspectral satellites are basically are, are essentially what beam a lot of information down back to Earth, right? What are the use cases for such data? Who are your clients? If you have any paying clients, if you could name a few. Sure. So I think the use cases are many. The, the thing with hyperspectral data is since it has 300 wavelengths compared to about five wavelengths that today's satellites bring down, what that essentially means is that you have 300 different information channels coming to you. Uh, and you can pick and choose which information channel to pick what information from. So 50 out of those 300 will tell you what is happening in agricultural farmlands. It'll tell you how healthy a crop is or how healthy soil is. Uh, 25 others will tell you if there's an oil and gas leak uh, in pipelines or other uh, oil and gas facilities. Um, some 50 others will tell you what minerals are present where. Are you looking at lithium? Some where you're looking at uranium or thorium. So the use cases are many. The product and the information is the same, our hyperspectral data. Um, we have had a few clients that we have announced to the, to the world, such as Riot into one of the world's largest mining companies, who we can help with finding new minerals more efficiently, reducing the uh, amount of... Um, contamination that goes out to the environment. We help monitor their existing mines. We work with oil and gas companies like British Petroleum. We work with companies like Google, who was a customer before they became an investor and so on and so forth. So I would say these are the few customers from agriculture, oil and gas, mining and environment sector. And then of course, uh, we also work with the Indian government, uh, Ministry of Agriculture and others. We also work with the US government with the National Reconnaissance Office. So these are some of the paying customers slash future customers that we have signed on. But we have a total of about more than 50 to 60 customers globally in every part of the, the world that uh, will work with us and buy our data. Uh, these are just a few examples in these sectors. Right. Um, speaking about the government, you mentioned the Indian and the US government. Uh, last we spoke, you said the government is doing a good job in terms of being an enabler policy-wise. But uh, what is lacking is still a commitment from their end to becoming a buyer, a first buyer, uh, a partner potentially. Are you seeing any progress on that front? We are. So I think you know, 2019, 2020 was when the announcement was made for opening up of the policy. And then... Uh, in 2021 and 2022, things really started to sort of take off from there. Um, what has happened apart from the policy? The first thing is the, big, the biggest thing is the policy because now there's a clear policy. Everyone knows that private companies are to be stu supported and sort of worked with and so on and so forth. Um, but as you said, in terms of actually creating an ecosystem for buying and selling within the country, there's still some way to go. However, there are programs such as the IDEX program uh, that the Ministry of Defense done, does in, uh, innovation in defense excellence or something along those so lines where they give grants to build prototypes and on the basis of a successful prototype, there is guaranteed procurement at the end of it for many more such things, which was earlier limited to other defense applications, uh, such as, you know, building ammunition and so on and so forth, or drones, but now it has been extended to satellites, um, and that's something that we recently won an IDEX grant for last year for um, building, you know, multi-payload miniaturized uh, micro-satellites. So I think it's starting. Uh, there's still a long way to go. It, it needs to go from beyond just the Ministry of Defense's ambit to, um, on the civil side, whether that's ISRO directly procuring satellites uh, mm -hmm. from various folks, or um, uh, whether that's uh, ministries of agriculture, mining, oil and gas, who will have their different requirements doing it. Hopefully with the policy now in place in the next two to three years, we'll start to see that, but you're already starting to see glimpses of it with IDEX.
Right. Uh, lastly, uh, we, we're talking about policy changes, etc. The budget is coming up, though it is an interim budget, uh, but we, we can still talk about what you would uh, want from the government. Yeah. Uh, there's an FDI restriction that's still okay. there, uh, a PLI scheme that's not there for the space tech uh, sector okay. yet. And also you spoke about the policy being converted to an act and then okay. a bill finally. Okay. What are your sort of wants from the government? Yeah, so I would say, I mean, look, the policy is a great start. The conversion into a space bill and then a space act will take two to three to four years because it's a parliamentary process and debates will happen and so on. So I think that will take its course. The earlier, the better, of course, because policy is great for guidelines and knowing what the government's priorities and focus is. But legally binding, you know, how it needs to be, needs to be converted into a bill and then an act. But apart from that, this year, I would say the FDI policy uh, opening of the automatic route up to at least 74%, which is what the defense industry is able to do, would be a good start. Um, and maybe at some point in time, 100% automatic, obviously carving out national security exceptions and so on. Um, a PLI scheme would be very helpful for folks building within the country. Uh, but even without that, there's also a few things around import or export of components for satellites because we do about 50 to 60% of our satellite within the country, but means that 40 to 50% of it still comes from abroad and we end up paying a lot of import duty on those, whether that's solar cells, for example. Solar cells um, or panels uh, attract about 40% um, uh, duty. And that is mainly for, obviously, terrestrial solar panels, but then now the same thing applies for uh, space solar panels as well, which are much more expensive. So things like that will sort of need to be taken care of. Great. Thanks so much, Aves. No worries. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here.